what's good youtube in today's video we'll be breaking down this depth scan effect utilizing the depth map and davinci resolve now for this effect you will need davinci resolve studio and don't forget to smash that like button subscribe to the channel if you're not already and then let's lock in here i have my two clips on the timeline with my playhead in the middle of the two clips i'm gonna hold shift and hit the arrow key twice to move over two seconds then i'll split the clip if i click on the clip and hit Control d i see i have two seconds of time that's how long I want my transition to be. I then take my clip and place it over the first clip and then split it at the same length. Box select both clips, right click, new fusion clip. Head into fusion. Now in fusion, I'm gonna delete the merge node and the background node. My media one, which is the clip I'm transitioning from, I'm gonna take the output of it and connect it to the yellow input. I'm actually gonna move this around, put the media two up top and my media one over here to the side. Then I readjust my media out. And so initially you will only see the second clip. Click on your media two, hit control and space. I'm going to look up depth map. If I'm mistaken, I've never talked about depth map on the channel before. Depth map basically creates a map showcasing the foreground and the background of your clip. So everything in white is more or less in the foreground. Everything in black to the background. Therefore, this is opaque and this is transparent. We're going to use this to actually create a scanning effect. So over in the inspector tab, we're going to hit the drop downs to activate our different tab. We're going to hit the check box to to activate them, you got adjust map levels, isolation, and post process. Depending upon your clip, you may need to adjust these parameters. But for right now, we're gonna leave them alone. And what we need to adjust is the near limit. This is basically what's gonna create the scanning effect. We're actually gonna right click, go to modify width, add them curves. Go to the modifiers tab, you're gonna change from source to duration, you can change curve to custom. Before we make an adjustment to this, we wanna change our scale and offset. This may vary depending on your clip. I know for this clip, I need to type in two for offset. It's gonna start off completely transparent. And then I'm gonna move and play here to the end of my clip and I'm gonna type in negative two. Now for my clip, it's not covering the entire clip. I want basically by the end of your clip, you want this to be completely white. So I'm gonna crank up my, well, let's turn down, shall I say, my scale into the completely white. So there's a negative 0.41. Again, these numbers may vary depending on your clip. If I go back to the first frame and move my play head across the timeline, you'll begin to see the scanning effect take place. I don't want the effect to exactly take up the full two seconds. So I'm gonna go over to my Custom curve, I'm gonna click here and I click here to create a handle and then I'll make a curve like so. This curve will not only determine the animation of the scan effect, but also speed of time. So if I play it back now, right when you get to about frame 38 or so, the effect is actually complete. If I pull this handle down further and go back on my playhead, you can see now the effect is completed around about frame 33 or so. If the animation is still too slow for you, you can also change the time scale. So if I move this back to say about frame 20 and I turn up the time scale, the animation will then play out that much faster. I'm gonna reset this back to one. Now if you create the animation, go back to tool, go uncheck depth map preview. That should bring back your footage. As you can see now we have this transparency between the two clips. So to fix that, we're gonna take the output of the depth map and connect it to the mask input of the merge two. Go into the isolation controls, changing things like target depth or tolerance will, will affect the actual animation itself. Just kind of play around with them depending upon your clip. If you want me to go more into depth map and the other uses for it, let me know in the comment section down below. Now we're gonna create the glow effect seen in the demo. To do this, you're going to need my plugin, Keyflow. Right now, I'm running a flash sale from now until the 1st of October, 30% off automatically, no code required. So I go to the effects panel, I go to templates, edit, effects. I'm going to search bar and type in Keyflow. I'm going to grab Keyflow Plus, and then I close the effects panel. Don't worry if you don't have Keyflow or don't want to pick up Keyflow, I'll also show you a way you can do it with the built in DaVinci Resolve tool. So with Keyflow Plus, now I'm going to take the output of the depth map connected to the input of Keyflow. I'm going to disconnect this from the mask input. Then I take the output of Keyflow and connect it to the mask input as well as the green input, which is the foreground. Then I go over to the add on panel, enable glow. By default, it will give you this kind of flame effect and it's mapped to the outline of the depth map. I'm going to turn up both the glow sizes and then I'm going to change the glow color to more of an orange like color. Then I'm going to scroll down and turn up the blur sizes a little bit. And then I'm going to turn the displacement strength up to two. Now it's kind of giving you like this flame effect. So now this is a heavy effect, so it will be a slow playback. Now, of course, if you have Keyflow, you can make additional changes to the effect if you see fit. I'm gonna stop right there and actually show you how to do it with the default fusion tool. So I'm gonna hold shift and remove Keyflow. Hit control space, I'm gonna type in a row dilate. You got the row dilate, hit enter. You're gonna reconnect the depth map to the green input. And you're gonna take the output of the row dilate and connect it to the output of the depth map, which is gonna create a merge node. Then take the output of the depth map and connect it to the row dilate. Click on the merge node, and you're going to hit Control T. This is swap inputs. Click on the row dialer and go to the inspector tab. Hit the drop down, change it to Gaussian, and then turn up. You should get like this faint glow effect, as you can see here. Then moving over the row dialer, I'm going to hit Control Space. I'm just type in glow. I'm going to grab the soft glow, and I'm just going to use it to change the color. So I'm going to change it to, I'm going to turn up the red and just kind of mess around with the blue and green, kind of get this more orange-like color. So now if I can play it back, oh, I almost forgot to reconnect the glow and output 
to the mask input of the merge one, or actually the merge two, I'm sorry. Using this method is not as intense as the key flow glow effect. Now I'm gonna take note that I made frame 32 and add one more effect. So I'm gonna hit control space and type in drip, hold shift and add it to my pipeline right before the media out. I'm basically gonna use this to create like a little distortion effect. So for mine, the effect completes right at frame 32. So I'm gonna go to frequency and set a keyframe and then change it to zero. Then I'm gonna go about two frames forward, so one, two, and then turn up the frequency and then go about five to six frames forward, turn it back down to zero. You can leave it as it is, or you can tweak things like the amplitude or the dampening or the aspect to change the effect. Next thing I'm gonna do is go over to settings. I'm gonna turn off the red channel. It's basically gonna create this kind of like chromatic aberration effect. Then I turn on the motion blur. I'm gonna leave it at the default settings and go back to the edit page. So now back in the edit page, I'm gonna go into the media pool. I'm gonna go to my master band and I'm gonna grab one of the effects from my rapid movement V2 pack, grab frame shake one and place it right here in between the two clips. This will basically be used to start off the transition. Again, I run the flash set on my website, gsmixmedia.store, 30% off, no code required, automatically apply to checkout. And I'll see you in the next video.